I should read the disclosure real quick if I can get back to it, because I thankfully have not memorized that. Okay, uh, person, bear with me here. Um, so, got it, it's being recorded. Uh, pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner. Join the Zoom meeting as listed. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted and public participation in any public hearing conducted during this meeting shall be by remote means only. All right, um, so why don't we start with the minutes? I think everyone received those prior minutes uh, for the 28th and the 8th. Any questions from anyone on those minutes? If not, I'd, I'd look for a motion to approve those. I'll move those, Jim. Okay. Ian. All right, great. Um, Second. All right, that was you, Lise, right? Yep. Okay. Um, I'm just trying to see who do we have here. So I've got everyone on the call, I think. So let me do a quick roll call. Um, Ian, please. Uh, Johnson, yes. Leah? Lane, yes. Lisa? Lise Juski, yes. Andrew? Bradley, yes. Uh, Steve, there you are, Steve. Steven? Steve, I called you official, Steven. Yeah, yeah. All right, Jim Ball, yes. Um, and what, who, did I, who did I miss? Bob Haley. Where is Bob? Oh, there you are, Bob, sorry. Bob, there's a lot of us on the screen tonight. <laughs> uh, Bob. Bob, yes. Okay, great, thank you, everyone. Um, all right, so let's go to, uh, do you wanna get right into the B-Waltz and the presentations and then we'll discuss the chart afterwards. Kim, or any initial comments? Um, could we have open space present? Um, there's, there's a project in last year's capital plan. Um, there was a, there was less for funding from the open space committee for an annual, the open space. annual contribution to the open space fund. Um, there was no funding request for FY22. Uh, when I sent the project detail sheets back out and sent it to Mark Silverberg, um, he indicated he would take it to the committee to determine um, what the ask would be for FY23. Um, and the committee was just able to meet, I believe, last night. Um, and so they are seeking to keep the request similar to what was in the plan last year. Um, same request for FY23 through FY27, which is a $150,000 contribution from free cash to the open space fund. And I will let a member from open space talk a little bit more about what they're looking, how they're hoping to use that money. John, will that be you? I believe so. Okay, please go ahead, John. All right, so uh, John Gelsich, I'm on the open space committee. Um, we are looking for some funding to replenish the open space account because we've purchased uh, some large properties recently and we have no money in the account anymore. So um, understandably, our account cannot be used for purchasing without uh, the approval of town meeting, I believe, but we can use some funding for appraisals for any kind of uh, properties that come up uh, that may be of interest. And so we're looking to have some recurring uh, contribution to the open space fund to build up those reserves again in case another property were to come up in the next four, you know, two, three, four or five years um, since we have no funding now. And we really have no mechanism to add to that fund as it stands. So we're looking to establish that mechanism and have uh, some funding available to us should something come up. Sorry, I muted myself. Um, any questions from anybody on the committee uh, for John while we've got him? Andrew here, I do have a question. So I recall that uh, there was a list at one point of potential parcels within the town um, that were worth considering as part of open space if they ever became available. Does Is that something that's still available because it gives us an idea of the potential inventory we'd be building to set aside a, 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 you know, a growing slush fund for. It's gonna be a couple of hundred thousand dollars or hundred thousand dollars a year. So that's gonna get fairly large fairly quickly. I'm just kind of curious to know what sort of inventory is out there that we think we might be able to target. Yeah, Andrew, this is uh, Ian. If, <clears throat> maybe I could jump in here because the selectman just put together a, um, 
and a land prioritization committee. And actually, Steve Durrett is chairing it, um, so he could speak to it too. But we we have just started meeting. We do have an old list, but we're basically looking at that list, um, going back out, looking at the properties. Um, we're going to be surveying the, the various town boards and committees to see, you know, where there might be interest in the future. So we're, we're actually kind of updating that list. It's something that we could share now, but we're in the process, as I said, of, of updating kind of that, that open space list. And it, it includes kind of open space, chapter 61A space, other parcels that, you know, potentially if a private landowner put something up for sale that might be of interest to the town as well. Steve, I don't I, know if you want to add anything there. That. Sorry. No, go ahead, Andrew. So we can share with you the old right. one. It's actually out. I think it's out on the uh, town's website right now. There is an old one. I haven't distributed it yet to, to the committee. And uh, obviously, I can send it along to you, Andrew, if you'd like it. I suppose, in generally speaking, we're asked in within this bounds and, and within any of our uh, warrants that we do, we're, we're asked to put aside money for something that we know that we're planning on spending. Um, and in this case, without some sort of visibility to what that inventory is, this is sort of just a good faith, you know, uh, cash fund that we're looking to open up that may or may not be usable at some point in the future. Um, and, and I say that because I know we've purchased some great land and, and I know that there's a great more, deal more opportunity, but, you know, I, I, I suppose... I will feel much more comfortable when I know that there is something we are saving for, not just we're putting money aside, um, earmarked for something specific with, without any, you know, possibility of, of anything coming, you know, to fruition for that. Yeah, well, Thomas, actually, John? that is the oh, purpose of the prioritization committee is to take those parcels that are out there, go out and look at them from the perspective of what could you use them for if the town acquired them and then rank them in that order so that if and when any of them became available, and let's say at any given time that maybe two or three for some foolish reason show up. So then that priority that's in the listing would be useful, I think, to those uh, who would uh, want to consider either using the set aside money or having to go to town meeting to request a specific uh, um, article to pay for. Yeah, and I, I would I just, to, I would just, Sorry, Steve. No, I was going to say the, the, the other piece um, to remember here is is when lands that are in um, protected agricultural or open space lands, so when private landowners have something in 61A or 61B, which gives them a, a tax break, um, if they decide to sell the land um, at some point in time, the town has a right of first refusal, but it's a, I think it's a 60 day window. And the open space committee is the is the venue we have to go out and, and basically order and pay for an appraisal for that. So with no money right now, if one of those came on the market, um, you know, a farm or something like that that's out there and they had no mechanism, you know, we would have no way to fund that without going to town meeting and funded. So that's really, I think, a big piece of what, what this um, fund is used for because that is um, that's our mechanism for you know basically that group um, recommending to the board of selectmen whether we want to act on our right of first refusal on a piece of property or not. John, did you have further comment? Yeah, um, I may be mistaken, but I believe the open space and recreation plan also discusses this, which is something the open space committee passed. And my internal clock is off now because the whole last year it may have been two years ago. Um, so it's a relatively recent update of the open space and recreation plan that does look into this type of available lands or potentially available lands to purchase for recreational and, and open space uses. Okay. Any other questions for John? Okay, great, John. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, we will, we will add that to our consideration. Okay. Do you need me to stay on at all or can I jump off? I don't, I, you can go. I, unless you're just excited to watch us work. Yeah. Uh, you I have go. another meeting. I am very excited, but I have another <laughs> meeting. I work for the town of Hopkinton. So I've got something like this then as well. Uh, Good. So I gotta go, go, that. go and have a great meeting. Thank, Thank you. you for coming. Right. 
All right, um, Mr. This, Robbins. This is Andrew. Uh, I, Actually, I, oh, I, go ahead, Andrew. I'm so sorry. I, there, I did have one more question. Maybe he doesn't need to be the one to answer it. It, it seems like this money has two different purposes. It has, it goes for um, doing appraisals uh, of the property, and it also goes to purchasing the property. Um, I, I guess I'm kind of curious to know what an average appraisal is, because what's going to be put before us is, I think the 150 thousand. If I heard that right, um, would we need a couple of appraisal, um, you know, appraisal opportunities? that we could fund in the short term if we wanted to do it this year. And then if we had an idea of, you know, what was coming downstream, we could, we could fund for additional amounts. Jim, do you have any comments on that or thoughts on that? Um, so the last couple of appraisals that we did were less than $5,000. So Kim, is there a mechanism for us to an adjust an amount? And it is, I mean, you know, fire truck costs what it costs, right? A cruiser costs what it costs. Um, in, in an instance like this, as a committee, is there any mechanism for us to say, well, um, we'd like to do less? Or, or is that something that no. you would use your discretion on? I, I think the committee could recommend, um, you know, the con if the committee sees value in putting some money aside, um, but doesn't necessarily recommend the full amount, I think that could certainly be a recommendation. Okay. All right. Uh, what, how would we express that? Uh, do we express that to you individually? Do we, or, I think do when we discuss we, that as a committee uh, or, or when we kind of go over these things at the end, what do you think? Yeah, I think when we come up, when we work through the prioritization pro, um, process and have discussion, um, you know, we could have discussion around that specific project and the potential for, um, because keep in mind, you know, you're making recommendations um, to the town manager for inclusion in the budget. And at the, you know, we don't necessarily have a fixed pot of money. You're not tasked with allocating a fixed pot of money. You're making recommendations about which projects you think are the highest priority. So I think that gives you the flexibility and the leeway to indicate you know, some level of funding and some level of support that might be lesser, particularly given the nature of this request. To your point, it's not a purchase on the horizon that we have a hard cost for. Diff difficult to prioritize something that you don't know when it's going to come up. Right. right. Um, okay. All right. Great. Agree. Uh, Jim, uh, ready to go with Bewalt? Sure. Uh, okay, so go ahead, please. What a, thank you very much to the committee members for making the time to hear us this evening. Uh, while I'm giving an introduction, I'd like to ask him if she could give Don Byrne permission to share his screen. We have a, a brief presentation of four or five slides that we would like to show you before. He should be to able to share. Okay. Don, are you there? There we go. Thank you very much, Don. So the way that we wanted to present this this evening is I'm going to talk in general about the, the Bewalt Trail, explain what it is, and then give it over to Don to give you kind of a, a couple maps to look at and to show you some slides of what an expectation might be in the future. And uh, this evening, we're presenting this as an, an FYI or an advisement to the committee. We're not asking for money for the next fiscal year. Uh, we want to pursue looking at the uh, beginning with the feasibility study, which one of the next steps is easements for the trail where we need easements on private property. And as some of uh, you may be familiar with this project, we have easements um, in many of the locations, thanks to the planning board and permitting, we took easements from property owners when projects were approved, where the easements cr uh, cross private property um, for the future. But what I wanna talk about a little bit before I turn this over to Don is the Boston to Worcester Airline Trail, otherwise known as the BWALT, has been around for a long time. You see this, uh, the slide up in front of you, it, the old trolley line, that's what it is. So if anyone is familiar with the trolley that ran from Worcester to Boston um, along Route 9 and then left what we know as Route 9 and went cross country through the center of town and uh, ultimately out uh, through our office parks on the east end of town, crossing Freiburg Parkway, West Park Drive, Washington Street, going under what we now know as 495 and into Southboro. 
So it's, it's basically trying to follow the old right of way. In many cases, the right of way is still intact. Like if you were to walk on the Sudbury Valley trustees land, you would see that the old train line and the cattle crossing going under it is still in place. The middle slide actually shows town property um, as it looks today, it's actually paved. That is a nice fall scene, but that area is now paved and that extends between Lyman Street and East Main Street, right aside the post office. You can get on this and come out across the street from Julio's. Um, but uh, the, the main thing to keep in mind when we talk about the Boston Worcester Airline Trail is that yes, it's a local trail, but it is designed to connect to Northborough, Shrewsbury, to the west and um, Southborough to the east and with spurs uh, hooking up with the aqueduct for Marlborough and Berlin and also crossing into Northborough to the north as well. Um, so it is a regional trail as well as a local trail. And it's not just a bike trail. I hear people say, this is a bike trail. It's a multi-purpose trail. It's for jogging. You can see on the right, the slide on the right. Um, and Don's gonna show you some other slides we talk about this as a linear park, a, a regional linear park. And so it's not only just for people who want to wear spandex and ride their bike 30 miles an hour. It's a, a park where people can walk, people can cycle, people can uh, roller skate or, or use their skateboards, or they can just sit and relax. So that keep that in mind, and I'm gonna hand it over to Don right now so he can show you a couple maps and. Don will stay with me. He's going to give it back to me to talk about what we think uh, the future expenditures might be for the town in the future. So go ahead, Don, please take it over. Okay, I'm going to actually start with uh, some projected usage. Uh, this is done using a very conservative set of numbers based on what is considered the national guidelines for calculating trails. Uh, it uses population in the area. I based it on the 2010 census, which was, we all know, the town has grown significantly since then. I also uh, took only one third of the estimate that they did just because we have other trails in the area and I wanted to be very conservative and say, this is a number that I felt we could comp comfortably do. And it turns out that we're going to have about 162,000 uses a year. That's a lot of, you know, when you consider facilities in the town, that's a lot of people. And based on uh, trail census, primarily out of Connecticut from 2019, again, I'm using a number backwards a bit. It's going to be a, almost a million dollars of revenue to local businesses, assuming that we are seeing anything like what the uh, Connecticut is, sees on its trails of similar nature. Uh, as I say, we took very conservative numbers. If I took the current numbers and literally because the last two years with COVID, there's been an 80% increase in the use of these trails. We're talking five times that amount. So, there is some payback potentially to the community here. As Jim was saying, it's a uh, regional trail. It actually will connect to a large number of other trails that you see in blue. Uh, it is, the B Walt is in red. It's going to go from Framingham to Worcester, just barely into Worcester, but in the Worcester. And from West uh, Borough, there'll be a spur up to Berlin, where it'll connect to uh, the Mass Central Rail Trail, which is the state's big project, which they're building from Boston to Northampton and have, expect to have done in the next six to seven years. And we'll also uh, connect up to, uh, from Southborough up into Marlboro, where it'll actually long-term connect to the Essabet River Rail Trail, which many people use in the area right now as a major trail for them. So this is both a uh, recreational and a commuting trail, because if you look at where the trail goes, it goes to places like offices in Framingham, 
offices in Marlboro, uh, places in Worcester. I actually have two neighbors, one of whom wants to go to Genzyme in Framingham and said, I'd love to do it on my bike and get out of my car. And we also have a uh, person who keeps saying, I want to give you the easement because I want to ride my bike to uh, UMass Medical because he works at a biotech firm right next to there. And Don, you might mention that the trail also goes to our commuter rail station. Yes, well, I, I'm getting to the uh, details of the town. So uh, it actually, I should say that between the various efforts, uh, including what Southboro is looking at, Framingham is looking at, and there's an effort in Grafton for a trail, we may actually connect to just about every commuter rail station from uh, Natick to Worcester. May all be connected together by the trail, a, a trail network. But for Westboro, it starts at the, uh, Southboro line, where uh, Dell EMC has the uh, campus that has been sitting there empty, and we hope will be developed one day into a viable office park. Heads west from there. Long term, we want to go under 495. For right now, we have a inexpensive route that goes around that by going underneath uh, on Flanders Road continues through the office park providing services to the various stuff on the office parks near 495 and Route 9. Continues over to East Main Street uh, where we hope to provide connections both to the senior center and up to the uh, uh, apartments opposite McDonald's to provide high density housing uh, connections. Continues from there to Lyman Street uh, and then through CarMax, where we already have an easement, thanks to the planning board, over to uh, Milk Street and then loops around the uh, sewer treatment plant and continues to Otis Street. At Otis Street is the split. One path is going to lead to the MBTA station. So it makes it perfect for people who want to commute from there or commute or come out on the T and hopefully do a bike share. And the other one will go north to Otis Street up near Walmart, where it'll head into uh, Northboro. And additionally, we have the split at Lyman Street that continues up past the uh, Pulte development where we have an easement. And then we'll continue into Northboro and go up to the Mass Central Rail Trail. So that's the basics. The red is the tr what we're proposing for BWALT. The uh, yellow gold color is basically on-road work that we feel should be done in conjunction with it using other funding sources like complete streets or safe routes to school or other things that would provide additional capabilities. And there's a little green over on the um, Western edge near the T station. That's the transit oriented village and where the state is building the new uh, bridge over the railroad tracks on Fisher Street and that they are building the trail there. So there is a trail already partially in existence and partially going to be expanded. Uh, one thing I, I'll add to what Don said is on that map, you see that the gold color runs the full length of West Park Drive. And that portion has already been provided by Karut Capital on the road, on the West Park Drive road. So you can ride your bike there today. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Jim to talk about the, the numbers. <laughs> Thanks, Don. So the, the, the cost to build the entire trail is in Westboro is I think a large number, 24,461,000. Of that, the town share is 12%. So 2,666,000, approximately $500. Um, that's what the feasibility study worked out for us when it, it comes to adding up 
the construction costs and uh, an estimate that we derived from a tool that's put out by Mass Highway and uh, Mass Trails and is also a national organization that has a cost estimator based on uh, linear feet of the trail. In Westboro, the trail be, will be 10 miles long. And that does not include the portions that we hope someday, but not part of this project, would go under 495 uh, uh, currently so that we could connect to Southboro in a more direct route and not have to go out onto Flanders Road. The design, the, the 2,666,000 is for design and permitting. Construction then, 88% of the project is borne totally by the state through trail grants. DOT has a grant, also Mass Trails has a grant. That's how we propose to fund it. Uh, we're not going to bring this to town meeting in fiscal year 23, because we want to follow the feasibility study, which next steps would be acquiring easements from property, private property owners. That's also important because it informs the design. If we have to move the location or the proposed location of the trail, because we can't acquire an easement in one case, it may change the design of the trail and it would ultimately change the permitting of the trail. So I think it would be premature at this point to ask for the money for design and permitting uh, prior to actually getting the easements. So we don't wanna put the cart before the horse. This is to advise the committee about what an estimate would be going forward. Um, and the design and permitting could take four years before construction begins. And now we have a spreadsheet. If you have that, Don, could you show it? Uh, I have your That's it. capital Thank request. You. Thank you. So this is what we submitted to your committee. Um, it, it's obviously a, a study design project. Uh, it's expansion of an existing trail that we have in town. We know that it'll take the, the life expectancy before we expect repairs to be necessary. Once constructed, would be 10 to 15 years. That 10 to 15 <laughs> years means after construction, following construction. Um, and the project location we just said is various locations throughout town. Um, I put down essential or urgent. Obviously, that's something that this committee has to determine. And then my explanation of the project is the money that we would ask for from the community is for survey, engineering, and design work for a 10 mile trail. And we showed $2.7 million for the ask. The, the number that we showed in the previous slide was 2.66 million. But I think that probably by the time that we get closer to asking for the money, it'll be closer to 2.7 million. Jim, can I ask, do you think that would be spread over a couple of years as that work is done? Or would you kind of need it all at once? Any sense of that? So our, we discussed that internally, and, and also I discussed this with Kim, and I think she gave me some really good advice, and that is if we were to not ask for it in one lump sum, if we spread it out over years, and we move forward, say, with the first year, and then for some reason didn't get the funding the second year, the project would be stalled, um, and I don't know what the future would hold from there. So when we ask, we'll probably ask the full amount. Okay. <laughs> Uh, just to explain, a closest example I can think of is, is that uh, Sudbury just finished their design process. And it's, or is, I shouldn't say finished, they're close to finished. They're going to finish it in July of next year. They started in January of 2019, so three and a half years. So the four years estimate is a pretty good basis for a number. Don, can you do me a favor and stop sharing so I can see folks if there's questions? Certainly. Uh, let me uh, get that out of there. <laughs> Great. Thank you. All right. Uh, questions or particular questions from the committee for uh, either Jim or for Don while we've got them. Go ahead, Lise. Uh, I was just wondering what the proposed funding source is because it's um, there's other writing in that column on the on the grid sure there are there are multiple sources of funding uh, uh, massachusetts have has a grant program called mass trails 
Uh, DOT also provides funding. Ultimately, we're gonna be applying for DO, uh, to DOT to begin with because they need to approve the design. So uh, there are multiple sources. Don may be aware of several others. So I, I pass that to Don. Jim, I just want to clarify, Lisa, are you asking about the part you're asking for from the town? From the town, the 2.7 yeah. so million, is it yeah. oh, like, again, a free, free cash, cash, debt, um, et cetera, et cetera? Um, I, I leave that to your committee and to the Selectman's Office of Town Manager. I see Christy here. She'd yeah, be better ahead, to answer that than me. Yeah, so um so so if we were to bar if we were to go for the whole thing at once it would likely be um at this point it would likely be a borrow okay. for, Too much for, for that cash. for that level of funding yeah okay the, i mean okay. another option that we've talked about and you know the select board has has sent this back and asked for a project plan um and so you know it's not different from what jim and donna described but certainly um you know if we were to do sections of the trail at a time over time um then that might change. But if we were to go for it all at once, it would have to be a borrow at this point. Uh, Thanks. Other questions while we've got these gentlemen with us? All right. I think uh, yeah, well, this is, I'm sorry, my hand is up. I was oh, trying I to do the hands up I, thing. I, I apologize, <laughs> I did not see that. Um, no, no, ahead, that's please. okay. Well, it replaces my blurt methodology. Um, there we go. So. The the 2.7 million, I, I understand that part of that would be acquisition of easements. I'm guessing part of it would be pave, pavement as well, um, structures, maybe linings to the trail, elements like that. Um, is that a way, because there was a 10 to 15 year life on this. Are we talking about the 10 to 15 year life? Obviously not on the easements. We'd be talking about the physical require, building requirements. Yes, thank you. Very good question. Thank you, Andrew. Y yes, uh, maybe I didn't explain that fully. So the, the design, engineering, acquisition of easements, we anticipate to take four years. The construction after that um, would be undertaken uh, by a private contractor and paid for by the state through trail grants. The life of the trail once finished would be 10 to 15 years before we think it may need to be resurfaced. Uh, I don't know that we propose lighting at this point. Uh, there may be some furniture like benches and things like that. The fe uh, feasibility study showed that we're gonna have to cross the Assabet River. Uh, there'll be a bridge. There'll be a separate grant just for the bridge to cross the Assabet River. There are other areas along the trail too where we'll have to cross through uh, wetlands possibly or move the trail, uh, which is why we talked about the easements and the permitting coming first, because that would affect design. And the, <clears throat> so you understand the 2.7 million is for the design. It is not for buying any equipment or anything like that. What the state design requirements are, including getting all the permitting and going through conservation and DEP and everybody else, including hearings with mass dot is the estimate by the tool is 2.7 million or 2.66 million dollars now well then maybe guess that the the corollary to my question then is it sounds like there's an element of this that would require building maintenance upkeep and that's sort of dpw that 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 be other groups in this town um i suspect are, are there costs, you know, keeping the trail clean, for example, are, are there costs that we would want to think about encumbering elsewhere if this project does go through? Andrew? Uh, yes, the answer, the short answer is yes, and we would have to reach out to the DPW. They're aware of this. Um, I've, all, I've already spoken with them informally. I'm not sure that um, at this point they're prepared to answer how they would maintain the trail, meaning would they maintain it for four seasons? or would they only maintain it non-snow season? That's something that we would talk about. The other thing I was gonna mention is, is that we actually, put, if you look at the feasibility study, we put an estimate in, including based on current rates for uh, DPW for the cost. But we also 
the estimate shows what would happen if we can get a friends of the trails group to do uh, stuff because a lot of the maintenance is simple things like weed whacking the edges and uh, picking up the trash. And most trails try to get a friends group and therefore save thousands, of, tens of thousands of dollars on a 10 mile trail, actually. Yeah, for, for example, so thank you for that explanation, Don. Um, one of the things that we've discussed is creating sponsorship for sections of trails. So if the trail passes through an office park, the owner of the road might want to sponsor that portion of the trail and maintain it, keep it clean. Um, and then in exchange for them having a plaque or a sign adjacent to the trail that says this portion of the trail um, maintained by the following company. For example, Caruth maintains their trail on West Park Drive. How, how do other and towns... Any... Oh, sorry, go ahead, Andrew. No, please, I've been doing all the talking. I'll let you step in, thank you. Uh, how do other towns um, a, a, that you know have approached the, the winter thing? Do they, or how does the state, does the state have an opinion on whether these should be four season properties? Um, like what if, because if we have a trail from Boston to Worcester and only Westboro isn't snow plowed, like would that be a big deal like in the eyes of the state or other users who would use it along that that whole expanse that's one of those things that evolves over time uh for instance the one trail in the state that is all is all plowed now is the minuteman bike trail that goes from lexington down into cambridge and a couple of the communities were querying it and there was at least one community that was not or had part of it in the middle and was not and after a number of years including the people in the town complaining they finally decided that it was something relevant to their budget but uh i think this is one of these ones we're going to have to see if if enough people want to commute on it there's people are going to complain either way if you plow it people some people were real happy, other people who want to snowshoe or cross country ski are unhappy. So it's <laughs> it's not something you can predict. You have to sort of look at where it is. Um, I keep telling people, don't think of it as a bike trail. It's a lot more, it's, as Jim said, it's a linear park. It's a trail for a lot of different uses. Like most good things in life, no matter what you do, somebody's going to be ticked off. <laughs> and, and a question Don, that I, I think know Don comes... figured that out long ago. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, I'm sorry, Jim. Uh, a question that I know comes from Steve Duret's heart um, from the Fails Project when we had a tiny little piece of sidewalk or, or asphalt that went above uh, Fails that suddenly needed to fall into compliance with. Um, uh, accessibility and, and that sort of thing. I'm trusting that 2.7 million includes whatever would need to be done to make the trail accessible uh, um, to, to all, all potential users? Yes, that's a very important part and that actually increases the cost as you can imagine, um, but that's already included in the feasibility study. Um, there is a maximum slope on the trail, a maximum width on the trail so that it can be traversed by those that have accessibility needs. Thank you. Can I get can I get clarity on on something that I thought Don said, and I uh, just to be sure, was that the two the two point seven million is a percentage of the total design cost for the trails, and that that's what it is. It's it's the design element of it, not the construction of it. Is that correct? Correct. Design only. Okay. So Andrew, you've been thinking it's actually going to buy us something as far as I can tell. And at this point, it's the precursor to the real cost. Oh, it I was disabused the right by that with, the, the, with the early conversation, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it buys us an invite to the grant process, essentially, correct? Right. Which is important. Uh, yeah. Okay. And Any is the presumption if we jump through all their hoops and do everything they say that that other 88% really is coming from, ends up coming from the state if we do everything you know, to their liking, or would there be a chance that 
you dive the money in and the state says, well, you know, that's great, but um, that other 15 million, it's, it's not coming. That's another good question. So Don and I actually, along with the former town engineer a couple of years ago, met with MassDOT at the District 3 office in Worcester to talk about actual difficulties that we were aware of on the trail, slope issues, wetland crossings, uh, bridges, uh, at grade crossings on Lyman Street, for example. And they, at that time, told us they were willing to give us waivers for their standards as long as we could show that the trail has unique characteristics that would have to deviate from their standards to be able to be constructible. And they, were, they said they grant waivers routinely. So um, as far as applying for a grant, they're always competitive and we don't know who our competition is. So in year one, let's say there's 10 towns along with us that apply, we may not get the grant the first year, but I, we would get the grant eventually. And they may give us a partial grant. Um, again, it, it depends on uh, what the competition is, how big the pot is. It's the same for all competitive grants with the state. Okay. So one other thing to be aware of is, is when we designed this from the beginning, we looked at a lot of the state criteria for the grant. So they love it that the trail connects to an MBTA station. That's a at points. Uh, environmental justice zones, of which much of the most of the trail is actually in environmental justice zones in Mass in Westboro with the new, at least according to the new census. That's another big check mark. Uh, I'm, I've been working, uh, we may lose it uh, this last one, but I've been working with the uh, East Coast Greenway, which is a trail effort that goes from Calais, Maine to Key West, Florida. And it's going to be a contiguous trail. Uh, nationally, I mean, these people have the phone numbers of most of the senators on the East Coast uh, their, their private cell phone numbers and the like, as well as the governors and things. And when they say we want this trail, that helps. We're still in the running. I'm not saying that one's a guaranteed, but we're still in the running as of uh, two nights ago. So we put in things to make it fr more friendly. Great, thanks. Right. Um, thank you, Don. Thank you, Jim, uh, for taking the time tonight. And, uh, you know, we'll circle back with any further questions. Thank you for having us. Thank you. And please feel yeah, free to reach out to me in my office if you have any questions at any time. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Don. Have a good night. Thank you. Hi, Kim, I think that means we're back to you for projects and prioritization and, and kind of next steps. Now oh, you're muted, Kim. There we go. Um, just, I was trying to pull up before I share the spreadsheet. Um, so you've heard at this point, I know you heard from Open Space this evening, um, unfortunately, just the function of timing of their meeting. Um, you only saw that tonight. We can certainly, um, I can send something back out to you if you want the opportunity to evaluate that project, and then we can plug it into uh, the overall evaluation matrix. Um, but I had sent out to you later this, late this afternoon, you may not have had a chance to look at it, but the, the summary of the overall ratings. So we had six, um, I had six of them come back in. I think maybe we have some preliminary discussion tonight. Um, one of the things, if there were any projects in going through the evaluation process, the rating process, if you realized um, there were any projects for which you were missing information or could use additional information, um, certainly happy to have that discussion and then go back to the departments and request that they include it. Um, and then I think what we can do just remembering that in years past, I think the committees, the role of the committee was viewed as allocating around a million dollars of free cash. Um, I think what we're looking at, because we're expanding the capital planning to a true capital planning process, 
Um, as you're well aware, there's more than a million dollars of projects. It includes, pro includes projects that are not funded through free cash. Um, so let me just pull up the spreadsheet. Um, so I think what we're ultimately looking for at the end of this process is for the committee to have some good discussion, the committee to be on the same page of some sort of prioritization of the projects. Um, and then particularly around the ones that would be funded from free cash, um, that would then go to the town manager. We're in the process of developing the FY23 budget that's actually due to the select board on December 21st. So we have a little time um, you know, if we need to have another meeting after this to round out that discussion and kind of come up with a final prioritization, um, happy, happy to do that. But let me try to share the right document. Hold on a second. Sorry, trying to get it so you can actually view. Okay. Are you able to see what is up? Yes. Yep. Now, now we can. And can you I see it all screen. the way across? I just need to. Yes. Okay. We can now. All right. Okay. So this is, um, again, we had six um, categories that you were using to evaluate each project. Um, you plugged in your rating, and then there was a total number of points for each project. So this shows um, project by project, rater by rater, how the projects came out. And then over on the far right is the average rating. Um, and I believe what you're looking at here, yes, this is where I actually sorted it by- um, Highest, highest priority. Highest yep. And I guess um, certainly open to discussion, to feedback. This was the first time you used that rating system. Um, how did it work? Places we can tweak. Is there additional information that you'd be looking for going forward um, from departments to help you use those criteria? Um, just any and all thoughts. Um, I, I have a couple of first thoughts and then, and then we might have to use the blurred method because with this stuff, I can't see everyone, but our people can certainly chat me. But um, two thoughts. First is when you have something like a fire truck that gets the highest rating that takes 790,000 of your 1 million of free cash. I mean, just your thoughts on that. I mean, because clearly a lot of folks are going to lose out in a year or potentially uh, that something like that comes along. And is that just the way it is? Or do you make any adjustments for that? Um, and then my second thought, and you and I already spoke about this briefly, Kim, was the one area, many of these things are, I mean, they're all subjective, I think, but they're fairly intuitive to apply, except in my case, where uh, it was the issue around, is it part of a plan? It occurred to me that I didn't really know in many of these cases, if they were part of a plan and there really wasn't a lot of information. And so I, I was aware of the fleet management plan. And, and I think uh, DPW spoke about that a lot, but I didn't hear much discussion about plans and the rest. So frankly, I didn't give a lot of rating to that where I hadn't heard of it. So that was the one area where I thought maybe we had, were lacking. Uh, and, and, and I think you thought the same, Kim, but those were my two comments. I don't know if you, you want to, if you want to touch on the comments individually or have other folks, I don't want you to have about 50 comments here and then try to answer them all. What are your thoughts there, Kim? Uh, no, I agree. Fun for these, for some of these big ticket items where we start to accumulate money. And I, I think, you know, going forward, if we don't, then I think we should have for example, for fire department equipment, which is a half a million or more, that we, we begin to have a kitty relative specifically to that kind of equipment so that you don't have to then have a ranking for the 790,000 because, you know, maybe, uh, maybe nine tenths of it has already been put in a kitty and it's now time to buy it. Haven't we been doing that for we, fire trucks right along? Until last year, we were putting 
from this plan, we were putting money away each and every year to the revolving fund. fund. Yeah. So, yep. so we were setting money aside, but the conversation, and this was kind of spotlighted, I think, particularly last year with budgetary constraints due to COVID, um, that that's a kind of a funding decision, policy almost level decision, because that you're allocating to, to do that, we'd be allocating anywhere from 150 to $200,000 out of this year's free cash, setting it aside when we know we have needs today. So it may actually beg the discussion, you know, is a $790,000 piece of equipment appropriate to fund out of free cash? Um, and it, it's just the idea of whatever money we set aside today, is not available for us to use today. And as our list of needs has grown, as we've expanded the process, um, we made a conscious decision not to bring forward that request last year to set aside money. But is there any well, money I, left from prior set asides a, for no, this? There isn't. Okay. And, and part okay. of this is we're hoping to get to a point, and I've seen this work in other capital plans, where you're anticipating what are the years when you're going to have your big request. And that's, so you have one big request and a number of your smaller requests. Over time, we should be able to build a plan that takes into account when there's a $790,000 engine, we don't have a lot of other very high ticket items. And the other part of the discussion we've been having, as we identify these needs, our typical 1.1 million in free cash is not enough to meet all of our needs. So we have to kind of step away from that historic constraint and potentially reevaluate our funding strategies for capital projects. An interesting thing here, if I looked at it, if you took the fire truck out, everything else coming out of free cash would fit in the one um, in million one, right? Yeah. You read my mind because I actually sorted it a little bit differently and did that. Yeah. So this shows, again, um, I just slid, I took the funding request because a number of these come out of enterprise funds. So they're not hitting free cash. So I added this column E that shows us exactly what are the asks out of free cash. It's 1.89 million, 790,000 of that. Is the fire truck. almost exactly at your free cash yeah. list the fire truck right well so, so is the how is the possibility to bring it as a debt item available or not how does that work or the other side is it can we go over in one year i mean this part of this one this is we remember this one was brought forward because and it raises another question that i'll ask here but it was brought forward because we know it's going to take probably two years, if not more, to once we put the order in to get it built. <clears throat> so I guess the question is, we- When do you pay for it? Yeah, when do we pay for it? Do we pay for it in two years or do we pay for it up front and wait for them to build it? <laughs> they, they can't order it without having the authorization to spend the money. So yes, the money, we would have to authorize the money for the project, although it wouldn't actually be spent the full amount wouldn't be spent until we took delivery of it two years from now. But it's it's still, there's not a way to break the cost out over multiple years because to move forward with the purchase, we have to have the funding identified and committed. But in terms of real money in our pockets, doesn't that give us flexibility in this single year to go above potentially knowing? The outlay isn't actually happening this year? Like, because we well, know that that money, I mean, yes, we get the town to approve it, but we're the ones who say 1.1 is the limit. Like, do do we get to say, well, except for this year? Because it's, that's not a matter of town meeting votes. Like, they just vote on the individual, you know, items. Well, I, they, I, yeah, I don't know, like. But look at the overall budget to see what the, the tax impact is going to be. I mean, you know, this this is sort of the same story that we do every year in terms of where does the money come from? You know, free cash. If it's is coming from free cash, it's not a tax impact. 
That's right. It's already yeah. been paid for by this town. Exactly. So, you know, the issue here is to what we call it in terms of the prioritization really has nothing to do with what the impact on the town is. I mean, if we think we need this thing and that's what it costs and we need it now or as soon as we can get it, then the town decides how it's going to fund it. You know, is this idea that we, the group, or even for that matter, the Board of Selectmen, chooses where the fund comes from, that, uh, you know, is in reality, the town meeting decides where it's going to come from based on advice, if you will, from the various groups. But, you know, the one reason why we have free cash now and the magnitude that we do is because we've been super conservative in terms of, of having it sit there. It, it doesn't really help us. Um, to, to have, you know, 13 million when we want to have eight or whatever number we're going to have. So, uh, but anyway, I, you know, I think, I think this is a spurious argument in terms of how we fund it in the sense that if we need it, we prioritize it and then the town itself decides where it's going to come from. Um, it's certainly convenient to say, you know, in article seven, a through W, uh, it's all funded from free cash. It makes it easier to get all that done in a, in a short period of time. But if the town needs it, it needs it. And, and you know, th based on how we've done everything for at least my experience at town meeting is, you know, uh, smart people put together the package to be voted at town meeting. And whether it's free cash or whether it's a borrow or whether it's, you know, raise and appropriate, it is what it is. And we go with it. And, and again, uh, I think what we found is that, you know, a million dollars today doesn't really get very far down the road of things we need. So it is what it is. Well, to me, a, a fire truck that has a 15 or 20 year, year use of life, I don't know why at today's cost, we wouldn't fund that with debt when you can achieve all the rest of these items with the free cash. That just, I mean, because if you use free cash for 800,000 of the fire truck, do you going to tell the police department you can't have your, your cruisers because they're four down the list? Uh, I, I mean, where, who do you say no to? Because, you know, we may say we're not going to do a dog park or we may not do the parking lot, baby, because they're on the low on the list anyway. But there's a bunch of things on here. To your point, Steve, you could argue, well, we have no choice. So how do you reconcile that, Kim? So I guess... I mean, Steve's comment is correct. Ultimately, it's town meeting that will decide the priority. Um, however, we still need to package this as part of a larger budget that goes before town meeting. And we, in part of what we're doing increasingly, you know, we're providing more information on what the impact of these projects will be on taxpayers. And so, yeah, it's really nice to say, look at all this the, this equipment that we're buying and there's no impact because we're using free cash. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's a decision about if there's an item that's almost $800,000, does that, and it's a high priority, um, how do we make it fit funding wise? And that I think that's, that's the information that the finance team needs that look, we view this as a very high priority um, but we do have concerns that funding this item, at the exclusion of these other items is yeah. questionable. Yeah. Right. Okay. I think that's so you, you'll communicate that. that view? Yep. Yeah. And I think okay. what's helpful with that is this notion of over time, um, you know, we may need to look at some of our other financial policies and make some, you know, we, we do have a debt strategy right now. Um, and under the current strategy, the idea of borrowing for something like this isn't, isn't contemplated. But that doesn't mean that as we continue to review and evaluate um, that this might not be something that gets worked into it. Yeah, I think to Steve's point, the idea that a, a piece of equipment with an ex a long, long useful life that's over 500,000 for instance should not be contemplated from free cash. I mean, that may be something to consider because it obliterates the whole process. Well, I mean, now that, we know if there is a process that finance figures that out, well, then that's okay. It's just a different way it's, right. it, it goes. Sorry, Lisa, I didn't mean to interrupt. That's okay. Historically, I mean, just thinking back on sitting in on town meeting over and over and over again, that is actually where the genesis of the capital 
slush fund, I can't remember the official name of it, where we would send the $150,000 every year so that when an ambulance or a fire truck needed to be replaced, because I remember someone standing up in town meeting and saying, you know, if I know I need a car in five years, I start putting my money aside so I know how much I have and why can't the town do that? And that's how that was born. So if we go away from that, just be prepared for the question on town meeting hall. And I guess I'll give that to Ian because they're gonna say, hey, selectmen, we asked for it, you gave it to us and now you took it away because they're gonna blame you. I mean, yeah. you know, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I think you're right, but, but here's here's what I, in my answer to that is we have done that, and that's why why we are at the top limit of our our um, reserve policy in terms of free cash. And I think it's for situations like this. We have a range, you know, ten to fifteen percent. We were mm -hmm. over at this last time meeting. We know this will bring us probably slightly under, but still we're going to be at the high end of the range. So I use it as as I. Well, for us as a capital expenditures committee, I think we look at that exactly how we're talking about it, saying this is a extraordinary thing. Um, I still think it should come from free cash, Jim, because we have it there. It's already money tax. You put it into a borrow. Taxpayers, basically, their taxes are going to go up if you put it into a borrow because we have to pay that debt off. And I think, I think that we have enough reserves in a time like this to be able to go. And, and if we, I mean, we may trim some of these off, but if we go back yep. in and they say 1.1, but we say we're going to go in at 1.6, that's the recommendation that comes out of this committee. Okay. That's I just want to make sure we're we? in a spot where we say we're, we said to buy the fire truck so you can't buy cruisers. Uh, I mean, because that's not viable, right? I mean, right. so exactly. I just wanted to be sure that that's okay. Yeah. Where are we in our percentage now? Are we at 15% free cash? Because well, the reason that, there's a range is so that we can spend inside that range. I don't want to hover at 15 and like die on that hill. Right. When... Well, that's the thing. At October town meeting, we were over, but we knew we were had money coming out this year. So we are, and Kim, correct me if I'm wrong, but we're probably at 16%. Yeah. I'd rather. Because we haven't take... expended all of the, yes, we will get back down under the 15% once we expend the projects that have been approved. I mean, I would still, rather see at the high every, end of it, so. I would rather see everything on this list get funded and be at eleven point two percent because we can still sit in front of the town and say, "This was an extraordinary year. We pushed up the fire truck, and look, we're still at eleven percent, which is within our recommended range." And next year, we won't be asking for the fire truck because we know that eight hundred thousand is already accounted for. That's kind of how. Right. And I would look at it like with, like having a range and then refusing to go into it is kind of silly. Yeah, and Kim, this goes back to what we're trying to do here with a longer term plan, because right now, looking at this year, we don't know what next year right. right now looks like. And if we said, OK, well, maybe these things we push off, maybe we push off the street sweeper right, for one year. Do. That takes. Yeah. And that's why I actually did forward to the committee. I had plugged in all the projects so you could see the five-year outlook because sometimes the answer is a sim not simple, but there may be a piece of equipment that we say, you know what, this is really not fitting in this year. Is it something that could wait a year out and you can slide it over? Um, when did you send that? I must have missed it. Oh, that's okay. Um, I think perhaps last Thursday. It was when I sent the materials for the priority. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, but Lisa, just the other consideration too, particularly mm -hmm. this year, um, just keep in mind, capital is one additional pressure on free cash. There are other pressures on free cash potentially. Um, it's not that 10 to 15% is, is free cash kind of holistically, there are other things that could be, free cash could be tapped to address. Okay. But am I hearing from the committee that there's an interest, and I know we still need to probably go through these, um, but looking at 1.8 million, realizing that a fairly hefty chunk of that is the fire truck, which is the highest rated item, um, there's an an interest in, in going through this. And if the number is high, the number is high. That's what this committee's recommendation is. Yes. Absolutely. I agree with that. 
Unfortunately, I think some of the projects that I see us having an opportunity to get some outside funding for um, are the small do- relatively small dollar amounts, things yeah. like the dog park. And Kim, that, that was going to be one of my comments of, about the, um, the rating system is like for the dog park, I rated it low, but there wasn't anything that said, if you think you're going to get, we just need to, I know you can't put it in there, but like this one, we probably aren't even going to use that 25,000. We just have to, mm-hmm. you know, we're getting all the grant funding, whatever, and they're going to try to raise all that 25, which they probably will do. So it probably won't even get spent. Yeah, uh, and the parking lot and paving. Not dot, and not get a big, huge grant because we didn't fund. Because that. we wouldn't, you know, chip in like a dollar from each of our pockets, basically. Right. <laughs> And I feel the same way about the parking lot paving because we have property owners saying they are going to do something and it is stupid to repeat work and multiply cost for one patch to do for us to say, no, we're not going to spend our $65,000 on our patch of paving, have all the abutters be ticked off who are property owners. It's almost like bad business, but where's the, where's the rating scale for like collaboration, you know, where's my entry right. for like collaboration and cooperation? Yep. Right. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think maybe we can look at and see if there's a way to fit those considerations in something that exists or is there another factor to I add? I mean, the B Walt fits into that too. They just said, if you give us 2.7, we'll give you 22 or whatever the number was. Like that's- a Little different. Sounds like a smart decision. <laughs> it's a huge consideration if there's this, con- you know, if there's a contingency. And to some degree, the library sort of is that because it's like, what's the town pick up and what is the grant pick up? Because this is all part of a grant process. Right. right. Um. No, I, I can certainly kind of go back through, as I had mentioned, I pulled this together using materials from a lot of other communities. So um, I can look back through and see how we incorporate those considerations, because I think you're right, it's important. So yeah, it is, was, there, is there a score for outside factors, you know, uh, yeah. some way to do that? I mean, we'd have to be made aware of those clearly by the department heads. And, but there, yeah. I think, at least to your point, it's a perfect example. They made it clear. Well, it makes sense to do this right now. And then we well, don't we'll get become... to give them credit for like seeking a grant or saying, you know, we're going to fundraise against it and you're never going to spend it. Like they get zero credit for, you know, trying to, to help us and help the town and help the taxpayers and 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 you know mitigate costs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, we've seen that with you know. I know that the fire the fire chief is always applying for grants, and that's awesome. But we always give him what he asks because nobody would expect us to turn down public safety equipment. So it right. never comes up in that context as a conflict. But when it's the dog park and it's a tiny amount of money, there's no way to say, hey, but then they're going to give us 10 times more. And oh, by the way, we're going to fundraise and you're going to get your $25,000 back. Like, There's no way to stick that in. Right. Is there anything on here that anybody finds surprising when you look at the way the project's sorted? This is Andrew, less a surprising thing, but I, I wonder, we're back asking a question about the, the money that might come from, um, you know, the, the COVID money. Mm. And, and I guess I just wonder where that applies in, in our funding choices or, or, or how we would want to consider applying that. One more external factor. <laughs> um. Yeah, is Isn't ARPA, that again for the finance anything, committee? Really, anything that's in free cash on the ARPA? I don't think it is. So, I'm just trying to look at what's on here. So, one we we just had a meeting this week, and we're we're still having some discussion because um, as frustrating as people find this, we sound like broken records. The Treasury Department has not yet issued final guidance, so there's real hesitation to move forward 
um, and approve ARPA funding for a project and not know if when we get down the road and have spent money and we get our hands slapped by the federal government and they say, no, that's, that's not an allowable expense. Um, so one of the projects that we have identified is the high school, the chillers in the roof project. We feel like that fits in the infrastructure category. Um, but then there's also some consideration, I think Hastings we were talking about as well. But the piece there that we need to better understand is if there has already been funding allocated for a project um, in understanding that we're coming back and asking for additional funding. Um, there has been some guidance that there's if there's already a portion of the funding allocated, um, it might not be advisable to move the project forward. So Andrew, I think we're trying to be very cautious. Um, we were looking at some um, water and sewer projects that seem to clearly fit in the infrastructure category. But the conversation is, okay, water and sewer would typically be borne by the rate payer. So that's just sort of a, a, almost a policy level consideration. Um, there's also the question of, is the infrastructure bill um, that the federal government, have they actually passed it at this point? Yes. Yes, yes, yes the they did, finally. Um, that, <laughs> that that may be a source for those projects. So we're very closely keeping our eye on all that. The, the, that was a very long-winded answer to Andrew to say, um, we're watching it and there may be a few projects um, and they're not all in this FY23 year. Um, we likely won't know at the point at which we plug this into the budget in December, but our hope is by town meeting in March, we would know what projects we intend to spend that 5.6 million on and could potentially reduce expenditures um, from free cash. So, so can we just put it on the table that our considerations ex explicitly ignore any impact of that? So we're assuming there is none of that funding that goes into these decisions. I just think procedurally speaking, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to look wishy-washy if we think that we're, uh, you're doing all of the absolute right things. So I take nothing away from that. Mm -hmm. But if we, if we put anything in our, our decision that looks like we're hedging or waiting, or I, I, I'd rather we stood away from that sort yeah. of language. No, I, I think I agree with you. It's a bonus if we end up getting that. Fund. Yeah, I, I feel like we have to assume they're going to say no. And if they say yes, then we're golden. We trust you to adjust. I mean, yeah. I, I think at the end of the day, this comes down to a prioritization process and we're handing that back to you. I think our comments, like we're saying, like, see if you can't fit this all in in a year where there's a giant thing like a fire truck. But at the end of the day, it's fluid as these things develop and we're trusting you in finance to, to manage that. And hope uh, that somebody I, I see, hands us money to do it. Right. <laughs> right? And if they but, do, but I, then it's... Great. I, I mean, the primary goal here of this committee is the prioritization, isn't it? You know, and, yeah. and, and there's there's already enough subjectiveness to it. If we if we all try to guess what money we'll all get, I think to your point, Andrew, we should we you know we're aware of it and we're aware that you'll try for all of it, but we can't we can't know, so we should assume it's not coming. Yeah, and that's not different from any of the prior processes that we used on the capital expenditure committee going way back. So I mean, the purpose is to say to the town, you know, it's been looked at in great detail by a number of people who have the best interest of the taxpayer at heart. And we think here's the priority of them, you know, on the face. And if the town has other ways to fund it, all wonderful. Otherwise, you know, this is how you go about it. So, you know, I don't have any problem with where we are and what it's going to look like. Uh, I'm just hopeful that the money that we're talking about and hoping to get from ARPA and the other places actually comes to pass in our lifetime. I mean, what you hear is, oh, well, finally it passed. Oh, when's the money going to flow? Nobody knows. Yeah, whole nother issue. Nobody knows. So yep. anyway, I, I think we did, we've done the job. And uh, even though you guys did your job, I haven't submitted mine yet, but I'm ready to go. So and I, do I think will send mine into you, Kim, tomorrow morning. Thank you. Um, and just the other to, to the point that Steve made, I mean, you are obviously you're the capital committee, you do the most in depth look at these projects. Um, but 
once they get plugged in to a budget, you know, that continues the intruder. To work its way, that continues to work its way through um, the advisory finance committee will be weighing in um, the select board, you know, there are other boards and committees and entities that will weigh in to Steve's point to ultimately, you know, inform town meeting and make recommendations um, as people yep. make decisions about how to spend money. And they'll continue to apply updated information as you have through that process. Yes. Which is great. Okay. So the only, um, I guess my only question is on the open space. Uh, do we need to give you a scoring on that? Yes. I, I'm, um, would you like me to send everybody? I'll just do a short, I'll, I'll send you a spreadsheet. I'll take all the other projects out that you've already rated, if that's the easiest way to do it. So you open space, open space and and is there's nothing really for Bewalt. That was just informative, no. right? Yeah. So not, okay. not for 23 this year. Yep. That was so, sort of okay. a telegraphing what made let us know what's coming. Okay. Um, Jim, one other thing I had is and appreciated that Amber had sent us the information on the that we had asked about the rooftop chillers and the, the mm -hmm. roof. Um, just a couple of questions because it was unclear to me. The recommendation was that if we do the chiller, we should do the do roof, the roof. At least that part, which I don't think is in that 1.5, I don't believe. The second Definitely. question, which I think is in there, but I just wanted to verify was, it did say that we needed to reinforce the roofs of the gym to put the chillers on there, or at least one of the gyms. And I, I think that was in the 1.5 quote, but I'm not a, Steve might be able to tell me better. I, I, I think it was. Okay. So really, so the only thing that is, is additive would be the roof piece. That underneath the chillers. That would go underneath the chillers. Okay. Yeah, that should be amended to reflect that, I suppose. Yeah. I still rate it where it doesn't change my rating. It's just the dollar amount should reflect that, I think. I agree. Good point. Mm -hmm. Um, any other questions or comments or Kim, any further thoughts from you? No, just the, the comment about the dollar amount would need to be amended. Um, my intention is, if you recall, we now have a whole capital improvement plan section in the budget document with some pretty tables and a lot of information as well as all of the project detail sheets. So um, once that's all pulled together, I will certainly send that out to you all um, but what I can also do is as I update, if I have any updates, if there are any dollar amounts that get tweaked, um, I will send that out to you just so you're all aware. Yeah, I mean, I agree on that one. That would not change my ratings, uh, but I think it should just be accurate. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's it. Is that a, a next steps, Kim? Then I mean, we'll, so my, we've got to get we've got to get that one done for, back to you for open space, and then what? Um, so I guess that's my question for you. I I need to pull together that section of the budget document, um, but I think I have clear direction what your recommendation is, um, and I can certainly put together. I can put together the section for the budget. Um, do we just want to maybe plan to touch base in a couple of weeks? It may be a very short meeting, um, just that way, in case there's any questions that come up. Or if in the meantime, in pulling that together, I need any additional clarity from the committee, I'll certainly reach out. Um, but just try to kind of close the loop on, on once it's all pulled together. I think it's fine once it's pulled together to have a quick follow up to get everyone's uh, input and confirmation. If everyone's Isn't there a step that? where we we vote that we agree with just our opinions as compiled or something like that? Like that isn't there a final step in in the last meeting? Was it some kind it, of a vote, or am I? It well, I think it would make that prioritization. Hmm? Yeah, I I think vote, you do have to have some support, you know, as uh, as agreed to by the committee. It is the recommendation that because we yeah it's our recommendation not that we're saying we agree with yeah you know how the finance team works with it but that this is this does represent our our yeah. work our product prioritization 
And so what I can do, if anything ends up looking differently once it's in the budget based on the finance team's review of it, I think I can make sure I'm very clear in the narrative that the committee you know, 1.892 million of projects in free cash were brought forward. The committee's recommendation was to fund those. And if, if for any reason that's not what's put into the budget that the town manager puts together, I can certainly clarify that there's a difference between what the committee recommended and what's actually included in the budget. Okay. All right. So I'm um, Perhaps uh, propose, uh, when you're ready, propose a date or two that we can uh, get back to you on for that. Or do you want to try to tentatively set one while we're all together? What's the best way to do that, Kim? Maybe while we're together, tentatively set one, um, if that works for what folks. the 2nd of December, which is two weeks out? We have a planning board meeting. On that Thursday? Um, oh, no, I'm sorry. I have a zoning subcommittee meeting, but that will be done by then. Um, I just picked that as a because it was a Thursday. That's I'm taking Friday. the day off from work. I would like nothing better than to um, conclude my my day off hanging out with all you fine folks. I mean, we can make it a longer <laughs> agenda. At least if you want to spend the whole day together. I mean, it's up to you. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, yeah, we no, got, actually, I have three appointments yet. that um, I crammed into the one day. So reading so, like, between really the lines, fun. Lisa, would you prefer to meet the following week on the ninth? No, seriously, I'm I'm just I'm just giving you a hard time. I well, why don't will... we do the ninth? That's fine. It's really Kim. What you I I just do the second thinking of your timing. But if you think the yeah. ninth is fun is and that gives you more time around because we have a holiday. That week, might be cool. helpful because then I could because I would like you to see the document. Um, you know, we're really trying to use it, beef it up, make it more of a communication tool as well. Um, yeah. so ninth I'd works for me to share. It. Ninth works for me. Okay. Yeah, I think that should be fine. And it maybe a very quick meeting. Okay. Same time, 5.30? Yeah. Yep. All right. Uh, you'll let the, uh, well, I think every, I think we still have everybody. Yep, okay, so just some, we're all here, so that's great. Thank you. All right, uh, I, I'm gonna Welcome move to adjourn. adjourn. Uh, there we go, I'll second yours. Okay. Uh, all right, I, I will just do a quick roll call, Steve Durrett. Red, yes. All right, Lisa Blaszczewski. Blaszczewski, yes. Lisa Lee McLean. McLean, yes. Robert Haley. Haley, yes. Ian Johnson. Johnson, yes. Andrew Bradley. Bradley, yes. And I will, James Ball, yes. Did I miss anybody? All right, uh, go Pats. Have a great night, everybody. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Bye. everyone. Thanks. I appreciate your help and your support. Ha happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Yes, happy yes. Thanksgiving. Happy Turkey. Good night, all. Have a great week. Take care. Cheers.